Hey, shalom, shalom, mishpacha. Welcome to another edition of Ray Bash's Ramblings. I'm your host, Rabbi Yehuda ben Shomer, and today the video is entitled, It's Not My Job. Through workplaces all out North America and throughout the world, sometimes you have your boss or manager or superior come to you or come to other people and say, hey, I want you to do this, I want you to do that, and they say, hold on a second, hold on, boss, that's not my job. You know, that's not my contract. I wasn't hired to do this, that, or the other. I'm not doing it. So today I'm going to tell you what my job isn't. Uh, because in the spiritual realm, in the realm of faith and organized religion, uh, there's pretty much the same sentiment. Um, there's some things as a rabbi, which is my responsibility to do, and then there's some things as a rabbi that uh, it's not my responsibility, it's not my job to do. Um, and so last week's Torah portion, Torah portion Yitro, Jethro, uh, it's number 17 in the annual Torah cycle. It's taken from Shemot, Exodus chapter, uh, I'm going to focus on chapter 18, verse, uh, verses 13 through 17, where it talks about how um, Yitro, Moshe's father-in-law, noticed that Moses was uh, staying up from morning till dark, uh, judging the people. That's all he was doing all day long. You know, usually about 8 to 12 hours, maybe even 14 hours a day. That's what he was doing, judging the people, settling disputes. You know, and out of all the thousands and myriads of people that came out of the Exodus, I'm sure within the camp there's a lot of squabbles that broke out, and he had to settle them all. And uh, Yitro said, look, what you're doing is not good. You're going to burn yourself out, and you're going to burn the people out, and you're never going to get to your destination. Why was this? What, what was up with Moses? Well, see, Moses being raised as an Egyptian, being raised uh, by the daughter of Pharaoh, uh, he was taught uh, the Pharaoh style of leadership, which basically is kind of a benevolent dictatorship, if there is such a thing. In other words, nobody blew their nose or nobody uh, did anything without the Pharaoh say so. And the, what the Pharaoh said, his word was law. And so he was the one that was in charge of everything, and he didn't delegate any responsibilities to hardly anyone else, and he made sure he was in the know about everything. And so he was like just this one-man leadership show, and that's the way Moshe was taught. And Yitro, being a descendant of Abraham, even though he was a Midianite priest, he had a different style of leadership. He understood uh, the tribal um, style of leadership where you had a confederate of elders uh, that represented different tribes. They came together as one judicial system. They were all um, you know, equal as far as authority and rank among each other and they would settle disputes among the various tribes and make decisions for the nation as a whole. And uh, Yitro rightly discerned that this Pharaoh type of style of leadership that Moshe was displaying at this point in time was not good for him or the people. Um, it, it just didn't work in a tribal setting. So you had all these uh, re tribal refugees that came out of Egypt that were used to this tribal style of leadership and justice. And Yitro said, look, you, you got to switch gears here. You know, you got to learn how to do things in a tribal way because a, you know, a dictatorship, as with Pharaoh, is not going to work for the children of Israel here out in the wilderness. You need a tribal style. So what I suggest you do is you find incorruptible, pure, and righteous men. And you make them, you know, you, you, you uh, rank and judge their capabilities and discern their capabilities. And you, you know, put the right people in charge of thousands and hundreds and fifties and tens. And uh, they'll, they'll settle all the, the, the small stuff, all the disputes. And whatever they can't solve, whatever they can't settle, they'll bring to you. You'll be like the Supreme Court, and they'll bring all those to you. And I'd like to read to you a verse from Exodus chapter 18, verse 20. And uh, this is what Yitro says to Moshe, to Moses. He said, And thou shalt teach them ordinances and laws, and shall show them the way wherein they must walk, and the work that they must do. So Yitro was basically saying, look, your responsibility is not to sit on your tukas all day from morning till dark judging the people and settling disputes. He said, your job is to teach the Torah. Your job is to learn and receive the Torah from Hashem and transmit it to the people through teaching. That is your job. That is your responsibility. And uh, so in, in like manner, uh, Moshe's responsibility was to hear the Torah from Adonai and to teach the Torah to the people. And it was no different in the Brit Kadesha under the leadership of the Sheliachim, the apostles. Because their primary job and responsibility was the exact same as Moshe. 
In Acts chapter 6, verse 2, it says, Then the twelve called the multitude of the Talmudine disciples unto them and said, It is not reason that we should leave the word of God, in other words, Torah, because there was no Brit Chodesh at that time, that, so they were specifically talking about the law, the Torah. It is not reason that we should leave the word of God, Torah, and serve tables. Now, in Christianity, I grew up in Christianity, so I, I know it pretty well. I've seen it all. I would see pastors changing light bulbs, cleaning toilets, even doing mechanic work on the church buses, visiting the sick, visiting the shut-in, visiting the widows, you know, fundraising, doing this, that, and the other. You know, not saying that these jobs are below a pastor or below a rabbi, but it's not their job. In Christianity, that's supposed to be the job of deacons. They're the ones who are supposed to be visiting the sick and going on visitation and going out and evangelizing and witnessing and taking care of the mechanic work on the buses and, and uh, you know, changing the light bulbs and, and, and making sure that all the, you know, stuff is taken care of. So it is, it is the, it was Moshe's job, it was the Shelly Akeem's job, and now it's the pastor and rabbi's job to delegate responsibility to capable men to take care of the small stuff. Why? Because it is Moshe's job, the apostles, Shelly Akeem's job, and the rabbi's and pastor's job to study Torah, to study and interpret Torah and therefore teach it to the people. That is their primary responsibility. Not to wipe noses, not to pat people on the back, not to counsel. Again, not saying it's below a pastor or a rabbi to do these things, but it is simply not their calling and not their job. So when a pastor or a rabbi stands before the throne of Adonai, and Adonai says, look, you're going to have to give account for every moment, every waking moment you spent on this earth. Your calling was to study my Torah and to transmit it to the people. But what are you doing here, here, and here, and here? All this stuff is good. It's good works. That's great. But you know what? It was your responsibility to teach the Torah, not to do this other stuff. You were supposed to delegate responsibility so that all this other stuff would be taken care of, so that you had sufficient time to study the Torah, to know the Torah back and forward, to be able to put it into terms that the people would be able to understand and to transmit it to the people. That's their job. And again, please don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that counseling and visiting the sick and changing light bulbs in the synagogue is, is below a rabbi. If a rabbi, you know, if there's nobody else who will step up to the plate, sure, a rabbi will do it. But you know what? That's a sad commentary on the congregation of a rabbi or a pastor if he's the one who's having to clean the, the facilities and do maintenance on the vehicles and visit the sick and the elderly and the shut-in and, and go on ev uh, you know, evangelism, uh, passing out tracts, what have you. This is all other busy work that's taking away from their calling of studying the Word of God in the Torah. It's been established in the Torah through Moshe, where God says, this is, you know, through Yitro, he said, this is your responsibility, to teach, to learn the Torah and to teach it to the people. Acts chapter 2, uh, ap, excuse me, Acts chapter 6, verse 2, the same thing. The Shelly Kim said, look, it's not our responsibilities to wait tables, to care for the orphans and widows. Our responsibility is to teach the Torah is to learn and to teach the Torah, not to serve tables, not to wait on tables. So this is not a, you know, this is not a tongue-lashing session or, you know, a condemning session, pointing and wagging the finger. It's just saying, look, we've got our priorities mixed up. We've got our chain of command all backwards. Uh, we have been raised, most of us who came out of Christianity has been raised and taught and given the example of the wrong way where the deacons just sit around on their tuchuses and keep the rabbi or keep the pastor in line. And they're kind of like the police. But you know what? That's not the responsibility of a deacon. That's not the responsibility of the elders of, of, of the elders within a synagogue. They are the ones who are supposed to do all the footwork and the handwork and take care of all this other ministry and peripheral stuff. And it's the pastor and rabbi's job to basically study Torah and to teach it to the people and make sure they transmit it correctly to the people. So, your pastor, your rabbi, your leader, whoever you're studying under, just like the Marines, they say, we're looking for a few good men. You know what? Your rabbi's looking for a few good men. Your pastor's looking for a few good men. Somebody that will take the initiative, step up to the plate and take responsibility and say, hey, yes, I'll be in charge of thousands. I'll be in charge of hundreds. Or I'll be in charge of fifties. I'll be in charge of tens. I will serve tables. I will wait tables. I will look after the orphans and the widows. I will pass out tracks. I will make sure that the bus is running. I will change the light bulbs and clean the toilet. I will be the doorkeeper of the house of Adonai. I will do all this thing 
rabbi, pastor, so I can free you up so you can do what your job and your calling is, which is to study, to know, and to teach the Torah of Adonai. Baruch Hashem. Hallelujah. So, uh, Talmudin, disciples are wanted. Deacons, in the true sense and definition of the world, word, is wanted. So, you know, kind of like the whole JFK thing. Don't ask what your country for, can do for you. Ask what you can do for your country. You know, don't ask what your rabbi can do for you. Oh, rabbi, I need a backpack. I, I, need, a, I need a hug. Please help me. Me, me, me. What's my needs? Instead saying, hey, rabbi, pastor, what can I do for you? Because you know what? If you take care of the pastor or rabbi's needs by serving and waiting tables and doing all that, guess what? Your needs will automatically be met. Why? Because your needs are answered and defined through the Torah. If the rabbi and pastor is able to teach Torah to you, all these other needs and wants and things that you have that's so important to you will automatically be met because they will be addressed throughout the year through the Torah. You take care of the rabbi and pastor, the pastor or the rabbi will take care of you. You know, that's, that's the way the word of God, that's the way of the chain of command, that's the way things are set up. And that's the way things should and need to be done. So we've got it, we've been taught wrong, we've been shown the wrong example all this time. And it's time to set the record straight. And it's time to do things according to the word of God, according to the Torah. Thanks for watching. Shalom and Shavuot Tov. Bye bye everybody.